So I'm Calum Kelly, I'm one of the technicians at Gray's, and a bit of a mountain biker. So I'm going to talk through some examples of bikes that are frames or parts of frames that have used some of the technology that we have available to us here at Gray's or with Bennett Make. So as Chris was telling us about sintering, we're just going to start with that. But first we'll have a quick, if you don't know what additive manufacturer is, it's what Ben's going to talk a lot more about, but it's a way of creating objects from CAD models. So you have a CAD model, you design that in the computer, and then you're able to produce that in a variety of different materials as a three-dimensional object by layering up thin layers, slices of material, a little bit at a time. And laser sintering is just another form of additive manufacture. Now, Charge Bikes, a few years ago, used laser sintering um, as kind of as a technical exercise to produce dropouts for some cyclocross frames that were <coughs> titanium. They were able to produce them that, so they were hollow and so they were lighter and stronger than if they were cast objects. So it was a safe weight on what was supposed to be a very lightweight, high performance frame. That is just one part of the frame, but that kind of idea of producing using additive manufacture and frame building has moved forward and different companies have developed that. Probably the first to make an entirely centered frame was Empire Bikes when they made an MXX prototype a few years ago. A few of you may have seen this bike and may be aware of what it was, but in this form, in this kind of printed form, it never made it to manufacture. It was a technical exercise, but it proved concept and had some really nice little details and was able to develop the technology further. Now, 3D printing uh, can also be used just for pure prototyping. That's what it's for. It's for trying ideas out. And whereas with the Sintering you can make functional parts, you can also print in polyesters and plastics. Now, they took the ideas of using additive manufacture from Empire to prototype and test tolerances and cable writing ideas for other generations of the same bike. So in this particular example, what would be in the finished frame created out of a milled solid block of aluminium, they've printed in plastic. And then they can test that for fit, size, tolerances, and they can box that into aluminium tubing. So they can essentially build the frame, build the bike, hang the components on it, and see how it's going to work as a finished frame, full size, before committing to any expensive real test and building functioning, rideable frame. Robot bikes are probably the most recent and finessed of the additive manufacturing in terms of frame building. They produce a frame using suspension layer designed by Dave Riedel of Iron Horse Notoriety. And what they do is all the joining parts, all the lugs, anything with pivot bearing is produced using laser sensors. That is then bonded onto carbon fiber tubing. So it'll come out of the sintering machine like this. They produce them finishing on the individual parts, and then they're able to make incredibly strong, complex titanium parts, which if you're the CNC machine would be more expensive. But what they are able to do, because they're producing the joining parts for this process, is do custom sizes. It's an expensive frame, but it's a tailored frame. If one of the most important parts of or bike is bike fit, then, sure, you can go and have a bike fit, but there's only five frame sizes to choose from from a particular manufacturer, then you're limited in that range. But if you're able to manufacture a frame to someone's specific dimensions on a one to one basis, then you're able to make something that is much higher end, much better fit in the product. And they're able to do that by using the sintering process. Now, sintering isn't the only way that additive manufacturer can be used to produce finished complete frames. There's a company called Carbon Wasp, and this is a much smaller scale enterprise. This is essentially an individual bespoke craft frame builder. And what he does is he uses printed plastic molds to create high-end carbon frames that again have that bespoke tailor quality that the robot bikes have. He has a few basic models. He has an a 160 travel and dual frame. He has a downhill frame and a cyclocross bike as well. 
But because he is then printing the molds himself and then laying that up in carbon fiber, if you want to change something of it, if you want to have the feet stay even where the top tube is, you want it a bit lower, so a bit more compliant and flex. If you want to put in a sport style compartment in the down tube with the stream, you can do all of that easily and without any major cost implication. Everyone's talking about the new Hope Enduro frame, saying what an amazing bike it looks and how Hope have an edge in terms of carbon fiber prototyping because they can make their own molds in the house because they are a massive CNC milling factory facility. He's doing the same thing in his shed with a plastic 3D printer based on the bike that Ben has it made. Just as a technical exercise, but purely as a technical exercise, one of the manufacturers of the material that the 3D printers use have a material that has carbon fiber embedded within the plastic thread itself. So they're able, again, using the same idea and concept of building as the robot bike, are able to manufacture all the work, all the job and parts, and then create, in this case, a track frame. Again, this is excellent for prototyping, for testing stuff out. Because they're printing in this particular material and it's not a sintered metal, it's not going to be strong enough for more than a car park test. But you can test it, you can try stuff out, you can see ideas, you can make a physical prototype to go and take the trade shows because it takes a potential investors to show that this is what I want to make. Again, using the combined thing and handle on this particular bike there. And I've got this three example here as well. Now, again, this is a track bike, not necessarily a mountain bike, but what it's able, what it's done is it's made something which are impo almost impossible objects to make. It's blended traditional construction ideas and methodology using tubing and lugs, but it's taken them into the modern realm of manufacturing. The lugs are printed using laser sintering process. The tubing is carbon fiber. They're then bonded together and the bending clear go to get that high gloss finish. Now, if you were to produce these logs by hand, it would be an incredibly time-consuming, difficult process. But once this person's designed the CAD model, you can drop it in, produce the, the logs, and then hand finish it, and then create a finished frame. Using forms and shapes that would be impossible to do using traditional or conventional construction methods. So is this ability to blend traditional cycling and bicycle frame manufacturing design at both small scale? This was a one-off piece, essentially, made <coughs> as a craft jewelry is in the cycling form, right the way up to proving concept or testing design ideas for large-scale manufacturing. Additive manufacturer can help in that process, as can make an RGU in developing these things. Now I'm just focused on frames. As just one case in point of example, but it could be any component on a modern mountain bike. Any single part, it's just a test form, it can be 3D printed. You want to see what a new stem looks like? You can print that out, it's not a problem. With the sinking machine there, because it's able to put, in that example there, sh shapes within it, you could print a hydraulic circuit for a dampener, no bother. You can make it in a smaller space, you can make it able to perform in a manner which wouldn't be able to happen using traditional um, CNC manufacturer, for example. You're able to do all of this um, on a small scale and test ideas out. Now, I haven't gone into any details in the actual manufacturing processes because that's Ben's realm of expertise. He's able to tell you a lot more about what's available in terms of make, what the center is able to do. I just want to give you some examples of what could be produced using the technology and machinery available here at Grayson Ideas. So, Ben, why don't you come up and 